Shalom and good morning. Today is January 7th and it is the 93rd day of the war between Israel and Hamas and Hezbollah. It has been three months since this war has begun, since the surprise attack of Hamas over uh, the south of Israel. Yet the Otachonot newspaper reads three three months of war. And in the picture we see a burnt house in Nir Oz, one of the kibbutz that was hit after the massacre. And here on the left we see soldiers uh, with a tank, uh, Israeli soldiers fighting in Gaza. This is a summary of uh, the three months in the uh, military front, in the civilian front, and in the political front. Let's take a look at the main article here. Hatzafon Bamerikaz. The North is in the center. And they're saying that even though Nasrallah is saying on one hand that he, he's trying to find a way out of this uh, war, he is still, Hezbollah is still uh, shooting over Israel uh, to the North, specifically strategic places of the Northern Command of Israel. And when this is the reality, you can't say it's just one more battle day, a day that's has been lasting for three months in the north. Israel, too, is preferring a diplomatic uh, solution, but that's not coming into fruition, and they're moving to, dip, to military uh, responses. So after three months, even after three months since the uh, beginning of this war, um, the, northern, the northern front is intertwined with what's going on in Gaza. Hezbollah and Hamas are connected. It also reads that uh, down in the south, in Gaza, 12 Hamas battalions uh, have been uh, somewhat demolished uh, in the northern part of the Gaza Strip, but there are 12 more um, in the southern part of the Gaza Strip, mainly um, uh, focusing in, uh, in Khan Yunis and in Rafa. So there's still a lot of work to be done. And yesterday, last night, the IDF spokesperson spoke about how slow this is, especially in the underground tunnels in Gaza. And this is um, mainly because a uh, intelligence failure of the IDF side, understanding how complex and large this underground terrorist infrastructure is in Gaza. In this photograph, we see uh, the smoke in, in the northern border of Israel with Lebanon. The next article is about the businesses in the north and how so many families and their businesses are just on hold, behashaya, meaning on hold. Yeah, they're saying losing the north, the businesses that are crashing in, uh, in sight of this war and the compensations that are not in sight. And there are different stories about a chef and his restaurant, um, about Alon uh, and his and his uh, farm with goats. We have actually uh, visited the specific farm. It's a wonderful farm in the north. He's having a hard time and he's struggling. On the side of the increasing distress, it reads, there is a concern that the day after the war will take a long time. I mean, this war is going to take a long time until the situation will come back, back to their, its normal. Um, yeah, and it says still, the, the northern border continues to be Tense, tense, and yesterday 50 rockets were shot to the military base in Har Meron in the north. Uh, in the square it reads, three months of war, the burning north. And here's a little article about a family uh, that left their home, like many, many other families, uh, but they left their home in Sden Chamiya. Sden Chamiya is a small village, and it's outside of the range of what Israel will um, officially support and compensate the residents that have to leave in it, that were officially evacuated. But this family, like many others, decided to evacuate anyway without compensations, and they're feeling like living in Sden Chamiya would be like a Russian roulette, living by chance, so they really prefer, um, they prefer leaving their homes. The next article is about Iran and about the big explosion that happened in the ceremony, the memorial service for Qasem Soleimani. It says Iran does not want to admit it is actually ISIS because they've been supporting ISIS for so long, but now it's backfiring on them. It says Hamishaka Kafur Shel Iran, the double game of Iran. Yeah, we see a picture of one of the cars in the explosion, and here's the funeral of all of those who were killed in that explosion uh, a few days ago. So it's, it wasn't Israel, it was ISIS that's in charge, responsible for the death of around 200 people in this mass explosion. Uh, the next page is really the cry of the hostage families that are saying, please let us not get to the day 100. We're a 93rd day, don't let us get to the, 
uh, 100th day, and there's a testimony here uh, from one of the hostages that was released about the um, well, sexual harassments or attacks that they experience in, in, um, in captivity in Hamas in Gaza. Um, and she's sharing what other girls are going through still, perhaps are going through still, in their captivity. And down here is um, uh, one of the soldiers that was killed, Roi Yochai, 31 years old. He fell in Gaza uh, after the birth of his firstborn daughter. And he's also the son-in-law of a um, well-known commander in the IDF. And the last article is about an overall update about the country of Israel three months um, into the war, since the beginning of the war. Uh, in this large picture, we see a, the damage that it was, has happened to a house, to a home in Manara, which is a um, village on the northern border with Lebanon. So politically wise or diplomatically, it says this is a race against the international clock. Um, and the Black Saturday has shown, uh, has done many different changes diplomatically, but really it has also shown who is for Israel, which is uh, America, Germany, Britain, and France, and who is an enemy, which is Russia and China. And of course, there's the anti-Semitism um, around the world against Israel that has increased since Hamas's attack over Israel on October 7th. Uh, educationally, it says the, uh, the studies or the school routine is, has been abrupted, abrupted again, and they're comparing it to COVID-19, uh, corona, that really um, uh, messed up the schedules for students. And even now, this is happening again, well, 48,000 uh, children and youth have been evacuated from their homes. Uh, they're not in their normal, normal schools. Uh, some kids are very, having a very hard time going to school after what they've experienced in the South. And the Minister of Finance is thinking of a new outline for the final uh, exams for the, for the uh, senior students in high school. Uh, evacuees. That's a segment in itself. And there is a concern of the falling apart of communities uh, because these communities that lived around the Gaza Strip and also in the north, they were uh, living together as a community in a kibbutz. Um, uh, and the fact that they were ge geographically close really helped. Right now that they're scattered in different hotels and, and guest houses uh, and moving from one place to another, some of them in Israel, is not helping their community. So the concern is what will be with them in the end of the war. The next segment is the personal security. They're saying that one of the uh, purposes of terror is to install terror and fear in you. And that has worked uh, in Israel because uh, more and more civilians since October 7th have been asking to carry a personal gun. Um, and uh, the government has been uh, looser than other governments regarding this. They've been giving more guns to to, to those who are asking. And last, it's economics. War is an expensive thing, but this war is um, the most expensive one by far. It is 217 uh, billion shekels until now, which is about 60 billion US dollars. So as this war um, continues, we do pray for God's will over Israel and its people. Um, thank you for standing with Israel. And you can go to All Israel News for more stories and follow us on our uh, social network. And you can like this video if you liked it. Please share this video with your friends and family. This is Rotem again for All Israel News.